That's the power of the cameras of life, people. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> What song am I singing? <laughs> by the way. And it's, because you know, usually I usually I sing a song that I've been listening to, or it's like a song uh, that's in my head. My mouth vocals are so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Like I, I don't know what song I can sing. <laughs> I don't know what song I can sing. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, no worries, no worries. All right, okay. You can see, Jason. You got this. I believe. No, I'm, I'm gonna. I've got no tunes today. <laughs> yeah, I believe your vocals, fam. <laughs> um, right, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> today we have a special guest, a very good friend of mine called Leo. Leo, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Leo, um, law student, um, currently do portfolio management, and yeah, that's about, yeah, okay. I'm 24. <laughs> it's good to know. Um, so basically, we, we brought Leo in uh, to this episode because we wanted to have an a episode where we talked about finances, economy, and just money in general. And it's a topic that came how, up quite a few times. Yeah, so a lot of people did say they were they wanted to talk about the impact of COVID on the economy, and we wanted to ask someone who knew a lot more than people are, people are us. finished, man. Sorry, people are finished, man. Coronavirus is is is, is mad. Why why do you say that? Like it's it's because like thing is like a lot of people don't realize that impact is which is going to have. On the economy quite a lot because what everyone thinks is that once the country starts back going back to normal things are go back to normal people get their jobs back stuff like that but the, that that's because what's that's not going to happen because what's happening what happened because everyone's saying oh yeah you know how people are saying oh yeah they've been furloughed that means the, the government had, you know how people have been on social media or whatever people mm-hmm. say the government has enough money to give to people and furlough them all this kind of stuff like you see that saying they give banks all this money for bailouts and now yeah. you've seen that, it? Because but what, yeah, yeah, what yeah. he if you don't realize on social media is like the government give banks, for example, they give they gave banks before like I think it was hundred and thirty seven billion on, right. on, on on bailouts and the banks have paid the money. So like it's not like it's a bailout where the banks take them keep the money, the banks have to pay it back. So like for example, if the, if the government gives the public the money back, the money for furlough for furlough, like the public ain't gonna pay the money back. That's but, money. Did, do you think that we're gonna we're gonna have to pay for this in the future? So through taxes and of course taxes 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 are gonna get raised. Taxes which is what we raised. yeah like you can see now in London as well. What, what like they have literally increased that they have increased the congestion charge in it from yes, 11, yes. I think it was eleven pounds and they made it longer as well and they've literally charging people from they're charging people again to do to take in the things like the TFL. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I think they raised it to like fifteen pounds from like eleven pound fifty. Yeah. So like they're doing that more and they do it yeah. So it's like just like just thinking that they're already they're already starting low key starting already. Right. Like, because like all the money they're losing, they can make their money back. It is a lot of money to be fair. I mean, at the beginning, it was like three hundred billion, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a lot. It's like they're, they're spending fourteen billion a month on furlough schemes, and also as well, you gotta remember, like they're literally losing money, not getting any money. Yeah, because people aren't working, so it's like it's not like where be, usually before, like they they get like um the government makes money right, and then mm-hmm. they give back money back, and it's like a give back, give back kind of thing. It's a situation where the government has a central system where they literally giving up money and not making money back. And then how that's working is well, how that's impact companies as and that's an impact company because companies aren't making profit. So these companies can't pay into the port into the tax port. Okay, cool. So what I was wondering was like the thing is about this the COVID situation is we don't know how long it's gonna last for. So how does the government or whoever adapt as the time goes on? That's the thing though, isn't it? Like that's why Trump is at in America shouting open the country back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's true. Like, saying, saying reopen America. <laughs> yeah. He said he said vaccine or no vaccine, we're back. Hydro hydro chlor- what's the, what's the drug he's taking on yeah that one isn't it? yeah that one in it to prevent himself catching corona but you know i don't know how that's what well, that's gonna like that's gonna work i don't think it's gonna work because it didn't work before in the trials you know what trump is like man that guy says people eat, drink bleach to people <laughs> well, i don't know but he's a different kind of he's a different kind of guy in it he's a different kind of guy but obviously like for him like you know america's have this basically they've got 16 percent um, thing unemployment rate. Yeah, that's crazy. That's like, that's especially that's, if you if you think of how many people that is. I think it's over thirty million. I think that's actually mental. To think that like, there's um, that many people that need to be supported right now. Yeah, which is probably why they're rushing to get people back into work. Right. Yeah, yeah, because like they gave out like I think it was like a two trillion 
two trillion dollars like um coronavirus um act packed in it like um aid bill in it right they approved of it where they're going to give out two trillion to basically basically what they're doing like um the checks they're doing giving people and stuff like that but even like even that that's not enough because a lot of companies are going bust from that because a lot of companies are going to go bust especially a lot of airlines are going to go bust but it's it, like it's having a lot of impact because governments don't know what to do with it because it's like they done it not expecting this over much of overreaction and then now there's a massive overreaction where the economies are, are basically just shut all around the world and it's like how do you how do you restart kickstart how do you restart the economy to back where it was like you, especially where you, where you say to people social distancing and that kind of stuff and that which is like really difficult because how can you tell someone oh yeah like um you know like an like vampire how, how can you tell a place like a club yeah saying your clubs can be open by but like just like um social distance how's how's that gonna work do you know what i mean that's not gonna work so it's like for example with gyms or, or into gyms like how do you how do you open gyms and say people social distance like it's really difficult to say that to people so like, i feel like they're just really kind of really just just sit and feel like because like we can't for example like we can't really live in fear all our lives in it like it's unfortunate obviously people are people as you know Trump, no, like Boris said, yeah, people are going to die. Yeah, I mean, we, yes, people are going to die and people have already died. Are people's lives not as important as the economy? Because if they're trying to rush people to get back to work because of money, but, but for example, in the UK here, the numbers are still not that low. There's still people dying every day still. So... Nah, he is saying, that, yeah. I asked the question, in it? I asked the question, right? So you're quite you're quite young and you're quite safe. If you if you catch corona, usually you'll you'll recover. You'll be fine. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Most likely. Yeah. M- more like, yeah, most likely you recover, yeah. Um, so would you so imagine imagine you work here, you don't go to you, imagine you work, you, you got a job, whatever. And then yeah. next year when you're struggling, are you gonna be worried about are you gonna be are you gonna be angry at the government for lockdown? I wouldn't. I'd be like, no. because it's not really a situation that they can control in that sense. I, I don't know. When you're jobless, right, and you're sat, because you've got to look at it from a political point of view as well, isn't it? Like, as much as lives do matter, and it's like, you got to remember, like, the reason why the country's the coronavirus lockdown is because it, it's not affecting the work, the working force. Like, it's not affecting the working force people, and it's affecting the old people's generation. So we've basically gave up, we basically gave up our work, our basically, basically, what the government is doing is sacrificing its workforce all the generation right that's the but people system. but people weren't sure at the beginning people people were saying oh it only affects elderly people but then there was also some cases where people who were young were dying so and that's and it. no and one that's, was sure that's in every situation though like for example if you for example if, for example if you take out if, if the percentage of young people dying is like it's an example one in one in one thousand yeah and for example hundred thousand people test of coronavirus one thousand one young person is going to die at least ten of them are going to die and I think it was it was like I feel I, I feel personally I feel like it was a media propaganda to stop young people to go in, to go to see their nans. Did you? I, I feel it was because I thought it was a propaganda. <laughs> I feel like because like, obviously I know I know it's real people are, are young people are dying, but I feel like it's mostly done for the media make to make sure like we don't go see old people and you know put coronavirus into care homes because usually like if. If you're not like, caught corona, more than likely, me and you'd be fine. Like, wouldn't we? Yeah, but I think what Jace is trying to say is that, like, okay, even if the number's small, every life life should matter. So why should we risk one one life, two life? Okay, like, do you know? Like, do you realize? Yeah, like, um, I guess like, explain it. There's more chance of you crack that from you crashing your car, right? Than you than you die from corona. So why do you? Yeah. So another thing is though, like yeah, f- okay. So for us, is 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 fine. Like if we catch it, if we don't catch it, that's cool. But if we do catch it, and even if we recover, it's the fact that we could spread it out, uh, spread it around. Yeah, yeah, and it's cool. But then it's a risk factor, isn't it? So how 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 do you stop your livelihood for something that for some for it's, it's about sacrifice, isn't it? So how do you stop your livelihood for someone you don't know, an old person, a pensioner who's gonna, who's still gonna enjoy their pension, right? Just funny. Uh, actually and you're jobless they like after 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 this all done yeah the, the pensioner you'll still have a pension they're gonna be enjoying their pension there's no cost to them but for you you're gonna have to pay like pay more pay more tax you're jobless the government's not helping now because government has no money to help you out like are you gonna be thinking like i wish yeah 
they locked down the country. You won't. Like, so you're basically like, saying screw the elderly people. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> yeah. I'm, not saying, I'm not exactly saying that, yeah. I'm not exactly saying that. But I'm saying, like, I can see why the government is now saying, let's restart the country. Like, there isn't much we can do because okay. you can't because be you know, it's like a flu. You, you, there's, it's a risk factor, isn't it? Like, it's part of life. Like, we we'll have to deal with it. Yeah. But you I mean, funny. Actually, I was going to say, sorry. Yeah, go um, on, Anna, go on. Yeah. When, when, when this first happened, there was actually conspiracy theories that the government were trying to kill as many old people because they didn't want to pay their pension and they, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. would save a lot of money. I don't know if you guys heard about nah, heard no, that as well. Of course, I heard yeah. I actually heard that. Yeah. Because because why would they why would they why would they lose <laughs> more money, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Not to pay pension. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> it makes no sense. How are you losing pension, yeah? End up losing your political power being in office, yeah. What just because you're gonna pay for you pay a few millions in pensions. <laughs> no sense, but yeah, no, Leo, I, I think like it's it's interesting because you like you of course uh, you you bring in that financial perspective and you're looking from a long term perspective. And I if I was to bring in like a more of a scientific perspective in as well, my, and, and I, I and I was to look long term, my my worry would be like if you're allowing people to roam roam around when the virus is still active and the fact that it's a the fact that it's a virus and not a bacteria means that it can um, mutate and evolve very quickly and then you're giving more it more of a chance to build resistance which will make it harder for vaccine creations and, and development and so on so that's the way we're looking at it and that's why you're getting this clash between the government and the world health organization so the world health organization are like yo hold up on the lockdown whereas the government are like now we, we've got no choice uh, we're losing money this is going to be a problem and that and that's where the clash is coming so i think it's really cool because we're getting that a miniature perspective of like both of those sides but um as you said, yeah, that's that's really that's a good point. Good point you made. I'm, I don't, I'm not really much of a scientist, right? But from what I do know, is like, um, as you said, like, um, there's mutations, right? Like the flu, like, like for example, like the flu mutates all the time, right? Yes, that's so, right. So every year there's a new flu jab, isn't it? So if you're if you're for your saying is if people wait for the vaccine to happen, right? You get the vaccine next year, you mean, uh, uh, like 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 coronavirus might might have like um uh, people again. Right, so and then it, it, again, I mean, like, basically, I mean, like, a new vaccine is needed every single year, like, or whatever. So, in their scientist point of view, it's like, so is that really, is that really benefiting any anyone if every single year things that people are going to be dying from coronavirus? Like, it's something that's here now. Yeah, I mean, no. So, like, the the rush is the rush is to get that initial vaccine out. That that's that's literally it. So, like with the flu, if we didn't have a vaccine in place already because once you have that initial vaccine even if there's a mutation you have a, a quicker chance of developing the next vaccine str uh, a lot quicker so for example new vaccines for the flu are developed every six months so they're always on it every year so they're like what's the new mutation all right let's do it quick time because they've got that initial vaccine so the fact that we're racing for the covid19 vaccine is because we need that base that initial that first layer of protection so no, that's why there's a rush and I, I agree with you like we definitely do need that first layer of protection but the bit but like it's like um as, as you were saying like coming from a scientist's point of view that we need what protect the old protect the people and stuff like that but at the same time it's like um how to explain this it's like it's like you're basically saying what you're saying is like basically saying we should just shut down the whole financial con country for which we, which we might find or might not find right in the next two years or whatever because it's not like it's a guarantee we'll find find the vaccine because they haven't found the vaccine that cure for age yet yeah but no, i think no. it's not necessarily about but they haven't found the cure I, for, for sars either the first SARS. no true i think um no, I don't think until the vaccine i mean it could take time but I don't think necessarily that we have to wait for the like we're waiting for the vaccine before we can get back to normal life. I think it's uh, about trying to contain it. Yeah. That's the government wanted to keep it low. Yeah, like what? The plan, I don't think the, the plan was not to save every every life because I don't I don't think that's possible because I mean people die from the flu every year, and exactly. but it's about that. keeping it low. I think the main concern was that if loads of people were suffering with it, the NHS would not be able to handle it. Yeah. And that would cause the collapse of it. But do you know what? 
But you know what's happening right now? Because like, like all this stuff, the brother's been telling me, isn't it? Is it happening right now? Like, like. What does your brother do for the for the listeners? Uh doctor. Doctor. Okay. Cool. Empty. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the most people, yeah, are going. You know how people go into hospital over hangover, yeah? They're not anymore because you might go to hospital over hangover, yeah, catch COVID and die. So, why would you do that? You're going to stay at home. And obviously, like, it, it brings up a question of when people are saying, like, um, oh, yeah, the NHS is underfunded. The NHS isn't underfunded because it's not underfunded. It's just people are abusing it. Like, if you're going, if, if you're having a headache here, yeah, or example, Example, like I don't know, what's a minor injury that I can, I can, I can, I can think of? Like just to, you fall down here yeah, and you've you've like hurt your muscle, or whatever, and you go to hospital. Yeah, actually, to be fair, I went to a hospital once for a really dumb injury, and now I think looking back at it, I wasted my time. I basically like got a cut in my finger, and I was, and I was scared that there was glass in my finger, so I went to the NHS and I sat in A and E for literally like <laughs> four hours. <laughs> what they I were saying it. when 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 this all the lockdown started happened, like all the A and E like the lines, there were no nowhere to be seen. Because imagine, imagine right now, yeah, Jason, yeah, would you go down for the same thing, same thing right now? No, I wouldn't right actually. Now. I would no. Corona. <laughs> 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 nah, I like to point out this, this was a few years ago, so it's not um, any any time recent. I'm not that silly now, but at that time I was a bit shocked. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though obviously, like, Corona made people a bit more like people are thinking like if you're going to go hospital, it's because you're actually really ill, isn't it? Yo, but then to flip on the other side, right? No, because yeah. there are also people dying at home because they are scared to go home. Yeah, to the, to the, I mean, not scared to go, scared to go to the hospital. So people are actually dying at home, which they shouldn't be. They're yeah, just saying. There's also like um. Um, um, NHS is, is cancelling like their appointments for cancer treatment. Um, the cancer loads of appointments stuff like that because they're just saying COVID, 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 COVID. But the cancer now is happening. Oh, they're, they're like scared to call their GPs and stuff. Yo, Jason, I was gonna say, how what did the how did the doctor look at you when uh, you went into the A and E that day? Do you know what? This was a few years ago. So I don't think I saw a doctor. I think the nurse basically they did the uh, scan to see if there's anything in my finger. To be fair, it was, it was a it was a deep. Dude, that's the worst one. Like... When the doctor's like, "Yo, nurse, you go." <laughs> <laughs> I'll do <something> <laughs> um and so then they basically said there was nothing inside it and then i could go because i don't want to have any foreign body in my that was my thinking at that time but now i was thinking like it probably wasn't that i should have just because I, I didn't need stitches so i probably should have just put a plaster in it and just like left it but we, we live and we learn uh, leo i was gonna ask so um what you say? How, how has it affected you like this whole covid situation boy boy I, how, how <laughs> Like, <laughs> you know what? The situations, yeah, where like, like I feel like probably like I'll say about, uh, I'll say about end of February, March times. I think I went through depression like a good, like a good, before. like because obviously like um I was managing someone's like portfolio and stuff like that, and like, um the thing was like um like my whole thing was like really good, like my whole portfolio was really good, like my whole thing was really good, and then with COVID, oh, obviously COVID, stuff like that, and because usually like most of my portfolios were. A lot of them were put into Tesla. I had a, I had a few into some pharmaceutical companies that were doing like um cancer research, biotech research, and um I had a, yeah. So I just I, I tried the best, but obviously like when COVID happened, like those shares just dropped, bro. Boy, they just dropped. Like it was literally like in this black because it's like when they're dropping, yeah, you thinking like this is so such a pointless reason for what they're dropping. So to recover. And it gets to the point where you're thinking, like, this is really bad. Like, people are taking this really seriously now. So I think for my, for mine, like, I feel like I, I made a few mistakes. I mean, it's part of the learning curve, innit? Like, uh, I made a few mistakes where, like, I really didn't anticipate how the world is going to react this much. So, like, in my perspective, like, I didn't think, like, a lot of companies would be really that much affected until even now I'm still realising how bad it is for the economy. But even now I'm still learning how bad it's going to be. Even after the lockdown... Like so, for that reason, like, it's really affecting me in that perspective because, like, I've like it just like it's just lost me like a lot, like a lot. Like, because my portfolio probably was like um was up by like four forty two percent, then it went down to like twenty twenty three. This space was like two weeks. And- for those of you, for those of like who don't understand like what what that sort of lingo means, could you like explain what in, like oh, why so, is it a good thing to be up forty three and down twenty? So basically, it's like um for example, so. For example, in my case, like for example, if you're managing, for example, one million, if you're at forty percent, that means like you're on four hundred thousand, four hundred fifty thousand, and so on, so on. like that's how it works. So, so for me, it's like it was something like something along like something along the lines, and then 
for it to drop down to 20%. Because for me, I, it was a big drop. And then everyone's like, ah, oh, and then you get all the investors saying, oh, yeah, we'll take our money back. Because like, they want their money back, really. Because you know? they're thinking this is bad right now. Cause, and oh, for me, as well, it was a situation where like I was going to stop anyway, like during, like, I was going to stop like April time because I, I wanted to go traveling. That was my plan. So I was going to go traveling. So I thought, like, yeah, I'll stop from April, end of, end of April. I can just focus on my uni and go traveling. So that was what my plan was. So, and then for that to happen, where I was like literally like one month away from like getting like like double the amount of money I was I was when I got and at the end that was like massive like that was like a massive like downtime for me like that was really affecting me a lot because I was budgeting you know, like like you know when you have you see money yeah and you budget the money <laughs> yeah budget the money ahead and you even have it. <laughs> A lot of people do that with their paychecks. They spend it before they even get it. Maybe <laughs> new but your monthly next monthly paycheck, but like you mean what the shift yet? <laughs> so obviously that was like a really painful thing as well. And then what's worse is like um when, when it was happening, I was stuck in Italy. Oh like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Like I went to Italy on the eighth eighth of March. Then on the tenth of March they they declared a lockdown. Like a, like a whole national national lockdown, and then, then literally like I was asleep here, and I woke up here at like five a.m. Yeah, I saw oh. I, I saw a message from BA saying your flight has been cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, listen, I was listen, I'm gonna go back to sleep, but that's bad vibes. I do tomorrow, isn't it? No, so, no. I just like yeah, this is bad. So like that was like that was when things where like I was thinking well maybe this is actually worse than I thought. That's, that's when I started realizing maybe I need to start like pulling back on some investments and just like. Sort of trade, like buying other stuff like that. So that's what I started doing. So and then like one of, but one of, but then that's the downside of it. But this upside of it has been more than the downside because like where's everything's going down below. Like everything's going down, you can buy it down. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so you can buy it when the stock when the prices are low. So the companies, for example, like Apple, like um. You know, Apple, Disney, um, Google. Um, like obviously, I, I don't like Amazon because I, I don't like Jeff Bezos the way he does his company. It's just to say, <laughs> I'll never buy any Amazon stock in my life because I don't like Jeff Bezos. But, but everyone like kind of Microsoft, work, those kind of companies, like those, for example, like you know, Apple has a lot of um, has a lot of um, like their balance sheets are really really good. So like they've got a lot of cash, like they make a lot of money all the time. So like they're not really, they're part. They're they're, they're, like, they're one of the few companies who are still buying back stock, like 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 their stocks. Most companies are literally selling the stocks, trying to get more money, get more cash flow in the company. Apple is still buying their own stock. That's how much money they have. Right. What does that mean if they're buying back their own stocks? So basically, a company has like um releases stock right into in, into public right. And then they can then into the course. For example, you can buy it, I can buy it, whatever. But sometimes the company buys it back, so they retain the ownership of the stock of their own stocks. So like the so like the, so like the, the, the dividends go to back to Apple stuff like that. I mean, so a lot of companies are not are not doing that, and companies and Apple is still giving out dividends. A lot of companies that have stopped giving a dividend. So those kind of, for example, Google, Apple kind of companies they're doing they're doing that. They they they're doing really well in that case in our scenarios. But then, like, there's other companies that, for example, if you, I don't know if you heard, like, Bella Italia has gone bust. They've five, five Yeah, bucks. I heard about that. They were just above, like, they were just trying to hang in there before it happened, right? And then yeah, all of this, yeah, and then yeah, that yeah. was the end. That's, this was the final straw for them. This is the final straw, straw for them. So, um, yeah, so Bella Italia has gone bankrupt. And um, it's, one of, it's one of those things, isn't it, really, isn't it? Like, you can't really, you can't really make this stuff up. <laughs> yeah, for real. You can't really, you can't, you, you like, no one, have, like, this time last year, you didn't think there'll be some virus or everything's going to go upside down in the world. Like, never. Know, like, you never. You can never predict it. So that's what I was going to say. Like, I think there's three ways of looking, like, in terms of perspective, like, in the situation that we're at now, like, you, you could either think of life as having completely paused. You could either think of it as, like, you're, like, you're missing out, like, you're losing time on life, or you can look at it as a chance to maneuver around. Like what? What way do you look at it right now? What's your perspective? Like what? Well, as in terms of like I, my perspective, like I look at it as a time to just refresh my mind. I think. Like I feel like uh, it's a time where I can refresh my mind and just focus on 
Like, you know, you know it's sometimes it's sometimes we get so caught up in the fast life, and it world is so fast, and this time everything just slowed down. Like mm, that's you know, true, that's true. Like, I agree with that. Like it's gone, it's gone completely opposite, and it's like we used to like this life. Like right now, it's, you know, like celebrities are very relevant right now. No one cares about celebrities are doing fam. No one cares. Unless unless it's Takashi Six Nine or someone like that. Unless you're an online star, but Quantum yeah. Radio. Quantum Radio. I miss Quantum Radio. Yeah. But <laughs> 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 you listen to this, bring it back. <laughs> um, but like it's something like it's something on one situation where it's like you either learn, you either sit here and take time to actually just learn a lot about yourself and like we and actually learn what you actually like doing. Like a lot of people are depressed because people a lot of people use the fast life, you know, happy. Some people are depressed because they can't go out and show off on social media. Like some people are depressed because they're talking about struggling because like some, some people live, live their lives by social media. And if you live by social media and you're and you aren't doing anything productive. What it feels like it's like being back in what it feels like quarantine, yeah. It's like you're back to being a child, isn't it? Like you're back to doing things you've done as a child, for example, like being at home, like not having going to work, not having the fast life. <laughs> like you're back to being at home and just like um kind of just relaxing, isn't it? Like you either find out you like doing if you like sports, you got sports, like painting. If you want to learn a new skill, you can learn a new skill. Cause I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to learn a new skill. I'm trying to learn how to do property, like um property investments at the moment, property real estate. That's what that's what my school of learning during quarantine. I've tried to learn that. And um I'm I'm trying to learn how to do coding as well, like, like computer programming. Like while while I'm while I'm here. So like that's what I'm, I'm trying to learn now. And it's going pretty well. Like the other day I literally wrote my first code and like like it wasn't it wasn't a big thing, but Yeah, it's like something you've done, you, you feel like, wow, I've actually done something which I thought was impossible. Actually, that is a big thing. What does this code do? What is the program? It writes a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's something, man. That's something. It writes a lot, isn't it? That's what it, does. it writes a lot, man. That's cool. That's cool. It a lot, man. But for me, it was like, obviously, it's not, it's not much in there. <laughs> yeah. That is something, bro. I, I know what you mean. Like, like a code is a tough business. business. I'm hacking the Pentagon just yet, and I'm going to, that's obviously, that comes a bit later still. But down the road, down the road, yeah, down yeah. Down the road, um, I'll be there. But obviously, for me, it's like being able to do something like that. It's just something like I never thought I'd be able to do. But now I've a thing to just take time and just and just um just relax and just yeah, it's been really nice. That's a nice perspective, man. I know another thing I was gonna say is so you talked about like, you know, like what, what sort of lessons would you say you've learned from it that you can take forward outside when we're out of this? Well from quarantine, lockdown. Um just the whole situation of like when it started, like you were saying, like you didn't take it too seriously at first, like yeah, what sort of lessons? Uh, I didn't take it. I didn't take it seriously because, because, uh, like, I didn't. I didn't take it so seriously. Yeah, I went to Italy on eighth of March. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh right. Okay. That's how much. I think that, that's how do, you know, do you know? Do you know what's funny about that situation actually? Because when so before, I think maybe a few days before that, me, my brother, and Leo went to Sweden, and when we were coming back, actually, when we were going, flights to Italy were cancelled. So. But this was like northern Italy, so flights like Milan and the north, northern part of Italy were cancelled. So when this guy was like, he's still going ahead to go to go to Italy, I was thinking, is this guy okay? Like, why <laughs> is like why is he still going to Italy when there's a when even flights to Milan? And then he when he went, when he, when he got out there, and then he messaged us saying, "Oh, by the way, something like I'm stuck in Italy." <laughs> We were like, <laughs> my fault. Joking, fam. we were like, nah, he's he he he's joking, right? And obviously, we found out that flights has been cancelled and Italy is on lockdown. So we're like, this guy's gonna be stuck in Italy for so, yeah. So so, what did you do, Leo? Like, how did you get out of there? It was a, it was long as fam. We had to like, we had, fam, we had to pay like extra money to get like um another flight, like a whole different flight, like a chat flight, like like they had no other. Other like um, what do you call it? Like other seats besides for commercial like, flights. Like, yeah. Whoa. Were you not reimbursed or anything? Whoa. Like um, breach. Like actually, I, I'm gonna check if I can get my refund for shares because I, I should. 
But I'm gonna email them for <laughs> like a refund, so I haven't got it, but um so like yeah, we had to pay like I think what I think all together we'll end up paying like over like one one thousand, two thousand pounds to to fly back home from Italy. Because it was like we couldn't send up a day because it was like you send up a day, you never know when the next flight will be. That's peak because like what if what if it was if it was someone in that situation who can't afford to pay that? They'd be stuck there. Nah, they'd be stuck there. They'd have to wait until EasyJets had been ch- ch- had a flight. And the thing was, it was like, for example, you stay there, right? And the hotels are closing. Do <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like one of those things, and it? it's like, you're like, you literally live in, like, unless you're living somewhere, like, with someone, you're basically like, because obviously, like, my brother had work, my brother had work as well, so it was like, like for them, work for them was like priorities. They're thinking like, I'm not gonna stay here for three days, four days in Italy. Like, or do you come back here after I suck us late for 14 days, whatever. But like, it was literally like the day we came back, it was the day they introduced the if you're coming from Italy, you got you got self acid for 14 days. But it was it was alright though. Like, I feel like after a while, I kind of kind of actually just kind of just brushed it off and said, well, anyway, we learned a lesson. <laughs> when we, when we do that again, so like, you know, we're gonna just kind of Live and learn. I was gonna. I was just gonna say. So, when the virus first happened, um, like you said, a lot of the. So before you mentioned it not too long ago about how stock started to basically go down. How did you? How did you take? How how have you taken advantage of it? Because you've given me some advice in this whole oh, situation. Now, so, um, now, I've, now, I've taken, now, because when it first started, yeah, I was like. I wasn't taking this very seriously, as so I said. Like I was, I was just like, ah, oh, it's a, it's a mine. This is nothing, rah, rah, rah. And then, then like this is like probably like mid mid um, probably like probably like nah, end of January because a lot of my stocks rely on rely rely in like south like east province of China because that's where they do manufacturing stuff like that. So like for example, Tesla's got like a new um, a new a, a new facility in China, like a new production line in China. So I was like, so probably for me, it's like end of January, stuff like that. I sold my, I sold my own personal Tesla shares. <laughs> so I sold my own, my, my own personal Tesla shares. I was like, yeah, this is not gonna look, not look good, right, right. So I sold my own personal Tesla shares, and obviously, I was like, oh, I don't know. But for me, it was like, cause my brother told me like to sell them. I was like, oh, you know what? I, 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 I'll sell mine, see how mine goes, and then I'll do my, my thing with my clients one in it. So I done my one, and then obviously, I was like, whoa. Then first up mid February, I was like, "What's happening right now?" I was like, I was like "This is getting bad now." So obviously, I started making, I started selling more, more trying to get more liquid cash on me. Then I, that's when I started selling both my. I saw some, I saw some of my clients. So I told them like they should sell some of the some of the stocks they had in pharmaceutical companies, stuff like that. And then, especially like the ones, especially that what, like especially the ones involved in East China. So that kind of carried on. Then it got to like March. And then it started, it started hitting England, and I was like, "Oh, dang!" So I started selling like a lot of mine, so a lot of mine as well. And then I thought, then I was, I was, I was selling more to get more cash, really, because, because I, I knew like if this, because I knew if, like if I get more cash when this thing goes down, if it goes down, I can buy from the bottom up. Yeah, so like, because I want to buy from the bottom up and see how far up I can go, I can really go. So. That's what, I, that's what that's what I'm doing now. So now I've like bought into like um new stocks now. So especially like the airline industry, that's gonna be really affected. Yeah, yeah. The airline industry, like a lot of companies, like a lot of airline companies are not gonna survive. Do you reckon? Yeah, you know, that makes sense though. That makes sense. I was saying to you, I was saying to you, I try to explain to you why because what is the airlines, yeah? We are not the like for example, me and you, we we on the air we Airlines target market, like, we, like for example, we don't make the airlines money. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we fight economy. Do you know what I'm saying? They make their money from business class, first class, those kind of people. That's how they make their money. Because like those, those they, for example, a first class ticket or someone might be five thousand pounds. Economy ticket is is like um, it's a four hundred pounds. Do you know what I mean? So it's like that different. That, that mad difference that like they, they if they can get for example 20 people first class yeah that's cool what so what's happening right now was the most exactly so most most people that are business wise are in the 50s 60s so they are 
Yeah, so yeah, though they are high risk of catching coronavirus and actually being harmed by it. So they're not gonna be traveling around the world for a while. Do you know what I mean? So that like, they're gonna be literally be doing Zoom, Zoom meetings and stuff like that. Like, yeah, that's that's a that poor, poor thing. So they're gonna be doing so a lot of airlines are gonna go bust because they're not even if they even if young people like me and you are flying or whatever, they they aren't making a profit from they're making a profit because the people they want to fly aren't flying. I'm glad you mentioned a certain one, uh, Zoom. So shouldn't that will be ironically flying right at the moment? Stocks. Yeah, I think I think I I don't really know much about Zoom if it's publicly traded, but I think it should be. I don't know if it's publicly traded though. I'm not sure if it's publicly traded. I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure that their stocks will be going. They should be going. Re- they should be going really up though. They should be going up because like people are using that to have meetings, to have like um to do a lot of businesses on Zoom stuff like that. So they're doing really really well, and it's like um. Because because of that, people are not flying. Like business business executives are not flying abroad. Business people that usually fly are not going to risk them catching corona because that they want to go traveling. Do you know what I mean? They they'll probably stay in, in for business meetings or whatever. So in that makes sense, a lot of airlines are going to go bust because first, and and other thing as well, it's all like um, it's all like everything's. It, Everything's interconnected, isn't it? So what happens is the people, for example, people like me and you that usually travel, we usually work in bars, restaurants, retail shops, and most of us are going to lose our jobs because of COVID. We have no cash flow system back. We, we have no extra cash. So people won't be going on holidays and stuff anytime exactly. soon. Yeah, Exactly. The people aren't traveling because they've got no cash, and that's one of the things which, like, so it's all it's all just massive, like, detriment in the economy because, like, you start off with one problem, cause another problem, cause another problem, another problem. So it's like that affects, for example, retail businesses are being affected as well. And it's like, for, so, for, it's like for, so I'll explain airlines first, isn't it? So what happens is, for example, people like me and you, you're, you're, like we can't fly much at the moment. We can't fly much because they're literally, they're literally, not, they're literally like, not, it's quite risky to fly somewhere. And as well, most countries say, once you get into a country, there's a 14 day quarantine. Yeah, so you can't, there's no point going on a holiday. If you're going to be quarantined <laughs> in two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Because you're in two weeks, right? Yeah. And while I'm out there, I'll give people like a little, a little, and if you didn't know, it's, it's a little something. So if you're a health worker, work for the NHS, right? Um, I think it's um, Qatar Airlines. Mm-hmm. They're, currently, they're currently offering um, free airlines, free free flights for, for um, healthcare workers. Oh really? Then which, which they fly to? Yep. Oh wow! For, um, That's amazing. Um, for, um, for the next six months. But here's the catch. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a catch. Oh. If you go to if you go to the country which they're flying to, you, you're in quarantine for two weeks. Come back. You're in quarantine for two weeks. <laughs> so basically, you can't even. You can't even go nowhere, really. You got to just gonna <laughs> you know, that one and just be like, "Yeah, this is our last day in the country, isn't it?" It's just like, and there's all, there's all like, there's all like, you go out there, fam. You might get stuck out there. <laughs> so that's just the that's the issue, isn't it? And it's like hotel motels aren't open as well. But yeah, it's the, it's a little thing. But obviously, if you're an NHS worker and you wanna go somewhere, just go on Qatar website, NHS, whatever. I'm not sure what it was, but. Um, Go on the Qatar website and find out the healthcare what well, how did they help, how they're helping health 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 workers, whatever. I think it's I think it's Qatar. It, it, it's like one of those two one of those, you know, those those part of the world airlines, isn't it? Right, so, okay. Qatar Emirates or something so, like that. To ask you a question, Leo, so do you think that because of what you said about airlines, about how you said that obviously business executives and so forth aren't aren't going, aren't traveling to have meetings and they're having these meetings on Zoom and whatever other other platform do you think that will change the way businesses are done in the future even post corona so do you think businesses will start thinking why am i going to travel all the way to say dubai for business meeting if i can just if we can just talk through like maybe do you think people see the benefit of doing these meetings online and saving cash or do you think it will go back to now i feel like joy is i feel like they'll go back to how it is isn't it because like most business deals that happen, in, like regardless like, of what's happening, like because of Corona, people have to adapt. Like as you, like you're forced to adapt. 
to, to a situation in your hand because they still have to make they still have to make the business deals in it. But usually they'll prefer on because they'll, they'll usually pre- because like how do most of people most of people are old school in it they believe in seeing someone face to face and looking at body language and true okay yeah. But for them, they like to so like most of people usually will wish you go meetings because most people like traveling on the on the company's dime anyway because it's um it's a benefit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. usually free in it because yeah. they they, t- they put on the on the on the as expenses in it. Yeah, that's true. So company credit card and stuff. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's usually free. So for them, it doesn't really cost them much. But when it comes to comparing your life to <laughs> traveling. <laughs> You got it's like um I rather have my life and just deal with this in it. But when when the rift is yeah. gone, like of course they'll travel on it. Like I don't think there'll be much of a difference. But I even from like... a business point of view, um, it would also it's a lot more effective f- to meet in person, right? Because there's only so much you can do and get things moving from Zoom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly that. So it's like they'll definitely meet up past online. But I feel like because most of, most of the CEOs are usually like old people that are just not really looking to just be risking their lives for no reason they're just thinking nah there's no point in me trying to risk my life for what so that's exactly what's happening but i feel like um well i hope anyway i hope like we adapt to the situation and we even though there's upsides to the, the economy being down obviously like i think like you asked me earlier like um do, you, do I think like it's right that they're restarting the economy? I think on the question you asked me, like on question asked. Yeah, me, we did. Yeah. Um, do I think it's right? I think it's a hard one because it's a hard one to 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 explain because because it's about evil. It's about morals, and it? it's about what kind of morals do you have? Like how far are your morals really willing to have? Because are you willing to? risk your life to, to, to have a livelihood that action is like I, I, you know because for example you can literally stay in your house and then go outside one time for shopping then catch corona then die you know i mean like you've done everything you've done everything to avoid it but you've caught it now and the thing and the thing and the thing is why the death rate was so high is because um what i, what I go to why death rate was so high was 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 because of this reason what i got told us so what was happening was what's happening was um nurses and nurses and so what happened people got corona really badly right then they go to hospital for example this for example i come a corona then i give it to my mom so people usually call so it's usually people just get flu in the hospital right like, oh my god i feel ill i'm gonna go to hospital i'll go flu let me go see my gp hospital rah, rah, rah. right so they go to hospital or whatever they go to hospital and then once the hospital they, they give it to a nurse right and the nurse is dealing with like other hundred, hundred other patients, hundred other patients in NHS, whatever people coming in, with all this kind of stuff, and he, and, she, and usually old people, like or or or, or other generation. So they, they give it to like one of them people, then they spread it to along their friends, their peers, which are old. So and then end up ends up in care homes, people are dying, and then the nurses are spreading that in hospitals. Like it wasn't like it wasn't like people getting corona like day to day as much as most like it's, it's been spread in hospitals and being care home <clears throat> and it's been spread by nurses moving around that's how corona was usually that's what that's what it was usually being spread by like of course it's spread by but the main people that were dying wasn't they weren't dying because they're catching corona in the streets they're catching corona in hospitals right yeah no that's that's true that's why now like if you if you call 999 they ask you if corona if it's corona incident or not like if members they are shared by corona incidents or not so, you, so like you have to call one on one and then they then eat one. yeah and then they call one one whatever and then they'll to call the ambulance for you if it's if it's not corona see how serious you are blah, blah, blah. it's like so it's like that situation where people go in hospitals at the time when it was too fresh people go in hospitals and it was like it was usually all people so, so it was going through care homes killing people in care homes like destructive in care homes and trapping all elderly homes or that because it affects all the people like it affects all the people so like a lot of, a lot of people could have had corona already like they're estimating like corona has, there's been i think it's like they say like 10 percent population and it's like 10 percent of england they're most people and then that's more that's more people than that that's actually more people that's actually more people than they've tested for corona but most people have yeah because we just don't have the tests yeah yeah exactly so because, for example, like, you can have it and never realise you have it. You can have it and you have a little minor little 
little um, go for it. Yeah, you can just a lot. Most of the people who have it are asymptomatic, just carriers, basically. Yeah, exactly. So that's what, that's what happening with nurses. So they're then going to um, into hosp- into hospitals as we give it to all people. Then they get affected mostly because their immune systems are weaker. And um, I feel like um, I feel like most young people are dying because oh, their immune system was overreacting, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, not overreacting. It was just because of the fact that. Wait, wait, were you talking about young people? Yeah, yeah, they were, they're dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a lot of young young people that were that were dying were people who had no idea that they had an underlying condition, and then it's this interaction with the virus that w- would have instigated that underlying uh, disease. So, for example, there was a kid in Spain who passed away and he didn't know he had leukemia. I don't think, I, I don't know if you came across that one, but it was one of the first few cases. Well, yeah, that well, yeah, about, that yeah. Yes. So there's a lot of similar cases like that for people of our age. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the sad thing, isn't it? Like, but then it's like, but then if you look at it, like, I don't know, maybe I'm being like built for like a, what you call it? Like a morbid person in it, but <laughs> from this point of view, right? Like people dying, dying from like people are gonna die regardless, and it's sad truth of life. That's that's just like, but then people are gonna people would have died of other other things as well. Like who knows what happened to have people that died of already? Like hit, you can have an accident, hit by a car, you know, like he might have caught something as well or something else, and he might have died from that. And it's like those people aren't dying anymore. Do you know what I mean? They're at home quarantined. So it's like, are we gonna stay in fear because we're afraid to go out in the world and live? Like how long are we gonna let a virus because this virus mortality rate is pretty low compared to something things like Ebola. If you deep it like Ebola had even Ebola right now still have a, has attained has attained fifteen percent chance of death even of treatment treatment. Yeah, no, but then the reason why we're a lot more worried about the the coronavirus is the fact that it's spread. It's it's the fact that it spread so fast. It's so contagious, and it and it's global impact. It's contagious, but even this um, but it's 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 kill rate is pretty low. Like it's kill rate. Is yeah, pretty low. yeah. Again, again, it just it goes back to that same conversation of we don't want it to mutate. We don't want it to give it that chance of becoming something so dangerous that it that the numbers of death rates just bumps up that's the worries but, I, but on that topic i think it's really interesting of like our different perspectives because like what i'm learning from you is that uh maybe from like a f- financial point of view you are, you have a more of a realistic out, out, uh view whereas for maybe like for me and jace like this is what i think is cool that you're on on this episode as well like me and jace we have a bit more of a like let's say reserved approach of like oh we got to avoid danger here and there if that makes sense more documentarian kind of thing yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, yeah, they won't get a burn. Basically, <laughs> nah. <laughs> I hear you. Nah, I hear you saying it. It's like you're not actually thinking about people being affected. I'm thinking, I like you. Are thinking that? Nah, let's worry about the problem at hand now, rather than the worrying about the problem with. Now. Yeah, as opposed to thinking about. I think people are worried too much about the economy or what's going to happen next year, and they're saying that no, we're going to be. Like what's yeah? What's we're thinking? Mate, people are dying now. Let's solve that problem now, oh, as opposed now, to. I hear you still because I was yeah, just yeah. I, I was like that. I, I was like that for I was at that bit. I was like, you know what? Let's all let's all stop this right around. And after a while, I was like, but how long are we gonna live in fear of a virus? Because, like, the situation is we can stop people from dying for, but then it's like um, like how do you how 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 do you keep a whole world inside? the it's like lockdown. Like, how do you how, how, like how, how, how do you tell someone like um you can't go out and do whatever you're gonna do for life because but then I wanna save someone no, life that doesn't affect you. You can't then like what other option is what just carry on living normal life and no 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 of course the not virus keeps spreading. No, of course not, but they've done social distancing now, on it. Social distancing is proven that it's 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 working, isn't it? So social, social distancing is Kind of what we've discovered though is that like from certain case studies across the globe is that the, those the case of it working and it not working varies from country country to country yeah of course now of course yeah of course like for example canada's working um like what actually you know what, what we're talking about obviously the economic side of coronavirus as well um 
I don't know, quite, kind of, kind of, a bit, a bit different. To, I, I'm going off track a bit, but I go track. So it's like um, so in America, so America has the biggest death, like you know, that like, um, death rate in the world, coronavirus. I ask you, like, why? Why do you guys think that that that, that is? Why? I ask you, like, your opinion, what, what you think that is? Good question. Firstly, I think okay. So the first reason is obviously because they got uh, one of the largest populations in the world, and then the counter argument to that is well, so did China. Why are they not uh, suffering? Supposedly, uh, whether that's true or not. <laughs> but uh, then you say, okay, well, it's the res- it's the response to the outbreak. So China went on full on strict lockdown, and they were like, you can't do this and that. Everyone got to stay in. They went uh, to sanitize everything like proper, like top level. Whereas with America, it was like it, you know how it went, like with Trump it's saying, cool. you know, it's it's cool. nothing. Yeah, like it's like it's it's nothing, and whatnot. So because they were so reserved, the the outcome of that was a lot more consequential, and that's why America is suffering a lot more than any other country out there. Nah, you're right. I feel like you're you're right. You kind of yeah, you're right in a way. But then like um like one of the reason on which I found, which I've like um been researching because I've researched like. I don't know why, I know, but I just I, I like learning about why different people have been affected differently. So, um, from from, from what I found my research is um quick quick plug though. If you, if you want to know um about how different people are dealing in different countries and whatnot, check out our Canvas of Life blog. Sorry, just had to drop that in there. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, sorry, bro. So um, so what's what happened in America? Because everyone knows America healthcare is private. What, what's happened in America is people like people would rather die at home than. That, than dying there, so people because it's costly. Yeah, yeah. So people aren't really going to hospital because, so obviously, if you in America, if you've got corona, you're treat, you're, you're treated for free. I've been doing, but if you haven't got corona and you're treated for something else, <laughs> you got to pay that. You have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, bro, you've hit the nail on the head. That is so true. So people aren't risking going to see the doctor because no one wants to find out if they got a virus or not. So what's happening is people are still going out spreading it because like they don't want to go to hospital. Like in here, we, in here, if you get those mild symptoms, you call your GP and you and you go to doctors and, and you go to hospital and, and they test for you. But America's like, if 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 you're gonna do that, you're gonna get like the healthcare system is so messed up. Right? Like no one wants to talk about that. No one wants to talk about America's healthcare system being the reason why everyone knows this reason why the the number is higher than everyone else because of the healthcare system. Like that's the reason. All right, so Leah. Uh, we wanted to ask you, so what stocks would you recommend people to buy if they wanted to get into investing? So like, if you're looking to invest in into like the long term, which I know most people aren't, but if you are looking to get into the long term, I'll probably get into um stocks like such as like aviation. So aviation is a bit of a tricky one though, because aviation, you got to look at the balance sheet. By the moment, I'll probably say Air Canada has got decent balance sheet, balance sheet, um, when you say balance sheet, what do you mean by balance sheet? Sorry to interrupt you. No, that's right. So balance sheet is basically it looks at how at like the company's um like um companies how to explain it in a simple way. Um basically says what um, how much money the company has, the money it has liquidity, it has um amount of money it has in its reserves, its capital, markets, kind of stuff. So basically just it just basically looks at that. So what you're looking for in this kind of situation, you're looking for money companies that have a surplus of cash so for example if a, so for example, if a company has if a company has for example is minus 200 million right and on its balance sheet and it's not really making that much and it's, it's, it's under budget right it, or like or like um that means that company will probably go bankrupt so if it's got like for example this for example the company's got one billion in this balance sheet whatever and for example like that the airlines was basically bleeding or something like fifty million dollars a day, right? So, like for example, like you need to calculate, for example, like the that's what like um the American government gave them, I think something like six billion, to help them like as a as a loan to help them keep afloat stuff like that and reduce so like they start reducing so like that's what that like, the companies start reducing their their staff, the planes running, all that kind of stuff, or and, like they do like um they do like um cargo trips to try and make sure like they limit the losses which are, which are occurring. So if, for example, if they're losing that much money, that meaning when they go to zero, they have to borrow money from the debt and stuff like that. So if they borrow too much money, then they have to declare themselves bankrupt. 
so that's when the, the stock price so like that means they can either do a few things they can either offer more shares to get more to raise more capital but usually that won't be allowed by by like um by like the fca or the or, or, or the sec or the sec whatever um they won't allow them to do that kind of stuff but then yeah so i'll say air canada um the airlines delta um also looking to cruise companies so World Caribbean cruise is a good, really good one. Norwegian um, hotels and the MGM 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 Group, um, Hilton hotels they're really good because like everyone needs hotels. Yeah. So and now yeah. everyone's starting to go. The hotels are going to open up soon. So yeah, exactly. So yeah. so that they're really good investments to do. But if you're looking for like really risky, quick returns, like if you're that kind of person, then I'll definitely say energy sector. Like some companies will survive, some won't. Um, but let's take a look at the balance sheet, as I said, see how much cash reserves these company companies have. But um, yeah, some companies will definitely not survive in the energy sector. So if you're looking about maybe oil, oil futures, that kind of stuff is really good for like high ri- high risk, high reward kind of mm-hmm. scenarios. But that's what I would advise. Or actually, even looking into even Apple is good if you're quite a safe bet. They can buy stocks into Apple. They're quite good. Like they're quite a good company to buy stocks into because right now they just they basically have so much money. That was they literally find they're pretty much like one of the few companies in the market that's, that's buying their own stocks because they've got so, like um they have, they have so much cash in the in the economy. But yeah, that's okay. so. If um someone is they've obviously listened to this podcast they're thinking oh what a great idea investing is Leo has inspired me to start investing where can they start what what platforms what what things can they use to start investing all depends on what you like really isn't it? like literally there's loads of pla- platforms but the one I usually recommend people to use because I just kind of just trust them and they're, and they're from Bristol as well um, is Hagrid's Lansdowne and I, usually, I trust them because I like a friend recommended to me and I've like I've been there before, and like um, and it's like at the beginning of the building, whatever, and it's, it's and they're really like really good company. Like they're usually very helpful in terms of like getting your money out. They don't really try, but like all they are, they they usually just start like a platform where you buy, which you use to buy your stocks, get into the, to the, like um the the fifty one hundred or and NYC, that kind of stuff. But like yeah, they're really good thing to use. Or you can use um. IG trading, that's one of the ones I use as well. That, that doesn't require like a minimum fee to join in. But yeah, that's what I use, yeah. Um, right, so, so roughing up, is there any other financial advice you would give people? Like, ooh, that's a good one. Like the consensus going forward from now on is going to be to save money, really. That's what, that's what companies are going to be telling you. Peak governments are going to be telling you. Governments will tell you to spend money because government wants to kick up the, the economy. But the likelihood is people are going to save money because people aren't really... People are getting pay cuts. Um, people are getting losing their jobs. You know, right now they reported there was another additional six hundred thousand people unemployed, filed an unemployment rate. But that's just people who are on furlough. That doesn't mean these people have a job after after they come out after they come out of thingy, after after they come out of um what do you call it lockdown because uh what what's happening right now is like um is like um a lot of companies. Are, are basically bankrupt and gonna 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 flop, but because of furlough and government schemes and like that, they're, they're just keeping afloat to give to, to give people money, so people can spend. So like my financial advice to people would be to definitely save. If you're smart, maybe invest into some into some things. Like if if you got spare cash around, don't leave into into the into the bank because what's probably gonna happen is gonna be it's gonna be hyperinflation. It's gonna happen. So. That means your tenth, your five thousand, two thousand, you have in your bank account. Well, I don't understand. What do you mean by that? So hyperinflation is when the basically the government, right? Because what's, what's happening right now is I explained to you. So the government right now is basically borrowing money from people, right? So borrowing money from banks, um, central banks, or, and the kind of interest rates, all that kind of stuff, right? So the money the government is giving to people comes from somewhere. They just, they can't just make it up. It has to make sense. So. What happens is um what's gonna happen is they're gonna start printing printing money, right? Okay. 
Isn't so, that what like Germany did back in the day? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So what they're doing, what we're, we're gonna try to do, they're gonna try to print look not too much money, or they'll try to print so much some money to make people spend money. Because what they want is to so like they want people to spend money to rebuild the economy so people can go out there and then obviously if you have excess money, you spend it, you know, buying stuff, going to going out with your friends, buying clothes, that kind of stuff, or like ETC. So when that kind of stuff happens, that kind of stuff happens, it's good for the economy. So what's happening is your your one thousand pounds might then be worth as much value as like nine hundred pounds. So for example, do you know how things have gone expensive? For example, you, you could buy a Fredo for fifteen p now twenty five p. Like it's still, it's Fredo is still the same value, but just gone up because of your inflation. Like it's the same way. Like back in the day, you got out of 10 pounds but now you need like 20 pounds something 30 pounds because things are going up because of inflation so your money becomes you you have your money but it becomes less because your things you're buying but if you get into investing or whatever of course you face the same risk of your of your stock prices going down but at least you know like if things if they're going up your money keeps up with the with the economy so example if you like if for example if 1000 there's inflation and you invest in 1,000, your 1,000 will remain 1,000. Because like your stock prices will go up, even inflation goes up, your stock, your stock prices go up because you traded internationally. So other, so it's like a, it's like a, it's a completely different to, 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 current, to like, to like a, to like a country's economy and stuff like that. So that's why, that's why I say investing money because it's a good way of making sure your, your money is doing something. Because what banks usually do, they, as I said before, like your banks take your money to invest or loan these other people. So banks are, are buying stuff with your money, owning companies with your money, and you and they're giving you something of like, what is it like, not point, not point three percent APR. So you're better off investing the money yourself because the government are going to invest it anyway. I mean, the banks are going to invest it anyway, but you're not seeing the profits. <laughs> yeah, you need cheap change basically for. Because like they're probably getting like something like, like like um eight percent, but from like um from your money and giving you not point three percent. But the thing is, by what banks offer is security because banks offer security saying, oh yeah, like your, like um because banks take their risks. But then like it's still, it's still the same way because if you look at it, if for example the two thousand eight crisis crisis that happened was due to Goldman Sachs had their um their stock prices and their borrowing money they were giving people went down. That's the reason why. A lot of um, a lot of um, there was a massive like um, not Goldman Sachs. I think it was I can't remember it was not Goldman. I think it was some, someone else. But they basically gave up money and then they were basically doing trading, whatever, investing their money, and then a few of their trading went basically bad, and then all the people that had banked with them had millions in them. Basically, got like something like hundred thousand. Going forward, by the way, um, I was gonna ask like, what's your predictions for the market? Because we obviously we don't know how long this is going to last for. Well, where do you see it going? Uh, what do you mean? As a type of like long term or or like um short term? Long term. Let's let actually let's let's do both. Let's tackle both. What do you think short term first that, of all? Short term wasn't happen is the market is going to rally up on certain things. So like um so like on certain industries the the market is going right, to like rally up on. So for example, energy will will get will be fine i thought energy sector will be really will be really fine in like a few months that, that's going to be really good because like um the reason why i say energy is really good is because um basically what's happening i use this um saudi arabia is the one that's happening the most so saudi arabia produces over something like 20 million barrels of oil a day so what's happening right now is there's like um, no one's buying oil so a lot of, as everyone knows a lot of people in saudi arabia they're rich because of oil right of energy sector, that's how they are. How they are. That, that's how they can run the economy the way they do. So what's happening is because those buying oil prices, oil prices are really are really low. They are now suffering because they're now going back. Like um, some of the billionaires are going bankrupt because they have because like, they can't keep up. They have too much oil and they can't sell the oil. I feel so money. sorry for them. Yeah, yeah, it's really sad. So this is like the country happening. So what they want to do is they want to reduce um. The, like so, basically, like they want to cut down the amount of oil barrels they're, they're producing, but they want everyone else in the in the in the world to do the same thing. So, so like everyone else does the same thing, that means the oil prices then go back up. 
and then so oil prices, so like the oil prices and energy sector the kind of companies will, will go back to being stable, like going back up again. So that's a really good way the market is going to go. But in terms of like, um, in terms of like, um, what's, what's going to happen long term? We're definitely going to be into into depression. Like you're hundred percent on that. Like, because like it definitely be depression. I, I definitely think it'd be depression because um, I mean it's a sticky one because what what the central banks are doing right now is they're cutting their because what happened after the first depression they created central banks to stop the, ever that happening again so what they usually do they have policies where central banks either give 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 money into economies um they pump money in because right now there's a lot of money on the markets but there's not not but there isn't enough money in terms of like people haven't got money if you if you get what I'm saying, so there's money in like with like banks and that kind of stuff, but people haven't got money. That makes sense. So people can so banks will give out loans stuff like that, but people haven't so like no one's paying back the loans. So that's what's cause, so what caused the depression is like um what's what's to make it into into a depression or recession was is because people because like the constant is gonna be to save for people save money and then like um. So because everyone, because like because of that, everyone wants to save money and stuff like that. No one's spending, so companies are gonna go bust. People are gonna lose their jobs. Um, governments, governments having given out all the money. Governments are not gonna be borrowing money from central banks. So central banks aren't, aren't giving money anymore to to like individual companies. If that makes sense. So more so smaller companies they're giving loans anymore to smaller companies. Because right now everyone's all happy. Governments giving their money, but that money needs to come back again somewhere. So putting an end into depression i think a lot of people know i think government knows this a lot of governments like i feel that's what trump is saying let's start the company again because he's scared he knows that he wants to be he wants to he wants to like delay the depression until he's after after he's in power because he knows like if he doesn't start the company again the depression will start sooner than before the election that's why he's pushing to start the country as soon as possible but i definitely think like the next year or something will definitely enter into depression like once everything is all Settle down and stuff like that, because especially like with the two meter distancing rule, they have of COVID, because like um because the, the, the especially in England they're asking business to be on half capacity. So how does for example uh, a, 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 like a club or whatever make money of of half capacity? They don't. They are actually at a loss. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. Yes. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So if that means it's like yeah. they're at a loss, that makes sense. So because they're actually at a loss and whatnot, they don't make any money. That means they 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 go. But that's why right now they're trying to say let's cancel the two meter rule and do a one meter rule. But then they're saying that's not even enough still. So that like they're just arguing about canceling the, the two meter rule in England because they're. Mm, I did hear about that actually. Yeah. Because they're afraid of that. Like, because they're afraid of like if they don't if they keep the meter rule. No companies will make money because they have capacity, meaning people are gonna get jobless, broke, and and then that causes other issues of social frustration. As we're seeing right now, if all that the Black Lives Matter movement is social frustration for people because people are getting what they need, so like, they're trying to avoid that quite a lot. So I think like I think a clear a clear theme throughout this whole podcast has been, what do you do uh, between ethically between the lives, saving lives and saving the economy. So I think that's also apparent for what we're going to be facing in the future. What do you reckon? It's it's quite hard because how do you, do you like, it's hard to put, it's, it's difficult, as I said before, that's like, a difficult question, isn't it? Because like everyone wants, of course, like saving lives should be power. Of course, if you're given the, if you, if, if you say like, if your question is that the way you put it, saying save the economy or save life, of course, saving lives is the correct way is the correct answer and the correct thing to do. But a lot of people don't realise, like, it be, unfortunately, we live in a capitalist world, right? So livelihood and life is based on the economy, if you get it. So what that means is, for example, it means, like, um, you being able to, for example, you being able to go and get food is based on the economy, right? And everyone else could be able to get food, buy food or whatever is based on how the economy is run or, or like, um, that kind of stuff so right now what we're looking at right now especially right now is a really good time so it's a really good point you made because right now um the un has been underfunded because com- both countries can't afford to pay the un money and right now yemen is yemen is experiencing like one of the worst um farming and um and like people are, like over like i'm glad you are, mentioned like, that like millions of people are dying but people are saying like obviously people and then what's happening now is people can't help yemen because no one has has the money to donate money do you get it well so uh, now, yeah people can donate people still can donate 
I'm, you can donate money, but if you've got £100 for you and your family, who are you going to give £100 to you and your family or, or people in Yemen? Uh, this also leads to loads of other conversations about, I mean, yeah, there's loads of people in power. This also leads to the topic about there's billionaires statistically being shown to have gone richer during these times and whatnot. Of course, like, but the thing is, though, but do you know what? Like, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a question you said, though, because, like, of course, like, there are billionaires that have, that have got rich and they are the ones that have also got really poor, that have got bankrupt, right? If you focus on the ones that have got rich, then yeah, of course, the the ones that have got hella rich from this situation, because unfortunately, they're, they're, for example, the guy that, for example, if you, there's a guy from, I think it's from Germany that owns super, Suplex glasses, or Sweden, that owns like the, like, you know that the glasses people use in, in, in buses and stuff like that, yeah. This company was about to go broke, to go bankrupt, right, before, like, um, for COVID. Right now, he's, the company has got like a, additional 3.2 billion mad do, do, do you got what i mean so, what a stroke of luck man yeah it's like, like he, did, he was literally about five he's about five bankruptcy like at least like a few months like a few months leading to covid because there wasn't a need for it but now there's a mad demand for need he's literally has stopped taking orders until october like he's about to fire people and kind of stuff so and what i'm saying like, is that there are people in, in like who can help obviously like that's yeah, a whole helping. totally different conversation but, but obviously, the thing right? is they are helping though it's not like they're not like social media gurus that come on social media and say look at me look what i'm doing because most people that have money to actually make a difference and do something they don't they don't talk about making a difference exactly yeah now me and me and jason said this in previous episodes uh if the people yeah, listening uh, want to go yeah. back i'm sure they already know that though obviously because they listen yeah that's that a funny of it I'll, I'll give you an example. It's like on Warren Buffett, for example. He donated most of his cash money he has to the Bill and Gates Foundation, which has been doing a lot, which is literally like, no, like, they don't talk about what the foundation does, but if you research into it, they've helped. Yeah, there's a, there's a there, well, they don't talk about it, but there's a whole Netflix, like, documentary series about it, about what they do yeah. and stuff, so. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, nah, but like, they don't, but like, you don't see. Yeah, they, they, yeah I, get, I, get, I get what you mean. Yeah. They're not out there flexing that they or charity and fun base is what you're saying. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Like, like they don't, like, they don't do the kind of stuff. Like, they, they don't do the stuff we see. If you got I mean, if you got what I'm saying, like they don't just lend a hundred quid to a homeless guy on the street. That's me. Yes, exactly. They don't do that, and they don't <laughs> do what we do for social media because they're more of a different generation. You know what I mean, so like they usually go out there and first hand and they help them out, or but they are people that help. They help them out as much as they can. And also, to your thing as well. For example, like um, what's his name? Jeff Bezos, right? Everyone's been very negative about him being worth going to be like the first trillionaire or whatever, kind of whatever, whatever. But it doesn't mean he's got trillion, trillion dollars in, 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 like, um, in his bank account. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's like, what everyone like, thinks, isn't it? When it they can't see that worth. He's worth $100 billion. He's got $100 billion. You're chilling there. No, he doesn't. Like, he might have something like, so what they, What do people usually do, right? They've got like a good credit score, right? To bank. The banks know how much money they're worth, so banks give them as much money as they need. So, for example, they will go to a bank and say, well, I want to buy a house for $100 million. And then my dividends, for example, is like $10 million a year. So I could pay you this much money, this much money, what I talk, right? So the bank says, okay, cool, that's fine. So bank will give them that much money for them to buy the house they need, buy, buy the private jet they need, all that kind of stuff. Because then the bank knows they're good for the money. So that's how I wonder what my credit score could get me. If... <laughs> <laughs> so that's I'll, I'll turn up. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I want to buy a private jet. My my credit is is is, is pretty good. Can you let me? Edit? <laughs> but that's what I mean. That's the, that's that's the people. That's the people actually function. So a lot of people don't realize that's what they. So everyone thinks a billionaire has a billion pounds. Do you know what I mean? They don't. Like some of them literally have like four million pounds in cash, and the guy will donate two million pounds. People say, "But he's a billionaire, though." But he hasn't got a billion pounds. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah, worth that's like it. me actually. I'm worth. I'm worth. Um, I'm a millionaire, but I've only got like um forty pounds in my account. <laughs> 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 that's that's what you can have. You can have it, but like that's what you can have, innit? It's like um, it's one of the things. Yeah, but people, but people don't really look at stuff like they look at. He's worth a billion. Means he's got a billion pounds. For example, if because tomorrow morning what could happen is his stock prices could could be down a, a half a billion, and he's now worth five hundred million pounds. You don't say he's got a billion anymore. He's got five hundred million now, but he's not worth. He's worth five hundred million, but he hasn't got five hundred million. That makes sense. So, so that's what that's a lot of issue is that it's like they can do as much as they can do with the cash they have. Remember, they gotta pay the bank their money back. <laughs> yeah. 
the bank wants their money back or the credit cards they get stuff like that the bank wants wants their money back as well because bank is thinking well if you're doing five million pounds of charity and you ask 20 million how you gonna and then your dividends is this much money how you gonna pay us back and then they can't pay it back then they, they go bankrupt do you know what i mean and then because because like you can be worth a billion pounds and still get bankrupt if you can't pay your your um your money so it means like they either have to sell their shares all that kind of stuff and then that's that makes them lose even more money so, no matter yeah. how much he's worth i doubt he has to worry about his cloud declining in the shops though of course so, not no, of right. course not, because they, he'll be they, right. he's all right he's all right he's all right he's all right he's, he's like, obviously like he hasn't got like a like a one billion pounds in his bank account just chilling there to give out to to give out to charity i mean of course they can that's what i mean like when i say for example one buffer was able to do that because if you look back on what he done i was like so he gets dividends and he he's he's he makes his money from compound interest and dividends so he had that much cash with him and he gave it away do you know what i mean so he had so he had that much cash and then he also sold sold some of his um like uh, stocks and other companies to make all that cash up to give away i think he gave something like 37 billion to the to the foundation whatever to basically like seven billion yeah that's mad but then even that like they like even that is not even enough to like because i'm sure i watched the mentor in that they explain like um you can put so much money into something but you aren't really it's not really getting rid of the problem because people a lot of people a lot of us think you put money into something the problem is gone because everyone here because we've all been taught money solves our problems right so like a lot of people think like if you might if if you put money into something, it basically that's basically you basically that everything's basically fine. But that's not how things go. So, because how long do you put money into? So, if a community needs ten billion dollars to 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 survive a year, you give them ten billion dollars. What, what happens next year? Do you know what I mean? There's there's people I'm thinking like, what what's long term? Because that's what people try. So, what you can do is teach people how to pre sufficient and work of governments, but governments in places like Africa and of corrupt places, the governments are so corrupt, the government are basically still the money. Like I'm from Zimbabwe, I know my personally, I know myself here. Yeah. Zimbabwean governments steal money, aid money, right? They get over a hundred million from from the from the from US in aid, over fifty something million from the UK in aid money. About ten million about ten million of their money actually goes to helping the people. Most of it goes to MPs and other people to steal the money. The beast is stealing that. Like, like, for example, like I said before, disgusting. Like, yeah, it's disgusting. Like, for example, like Mugabe was a billionaire. From what? He's a president. Why, why is he a billionaire? He's stealing money from the from people. Like him and his friends are all they're all thieves. They stole money from 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 aid money, money from taxpayers. Like they stole the money and they just literally just used it for themselves. They didn't put it back into economy. So, if you're gonna like, if you if you're saying this, you got people billionaires, why should do more to help people? Well, they can do more to help people, but you need to you need to make sure that the infrastructures which they give that come um, are giving money into are actually helping people. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's like Oxfam. Oxfam like Oxfam pays they are head of Oxfam like, over two hundred thousand pounds. What for what reason is is a man who's working with charity getting over two hundred over six figures? Why? <laughs> Why are you working in charity and getting over six figures? For what reason? That's that literally opens this opens up a whole different like conversation when it comes to charities and all these like some of these like non-profit organizations but then the ceos and the directors of these places are like hella rich and it's, it's just it doesn't make sense crazy to people. so yeah. that opens up a whole can of worms i think we'll leave that for episode two. yeah that's yeah that's what we talk about now yeah, <laughs> yeah about well, episode two i'm in part two obviously but yeah nah i think we're wrapping up we but i mean like just to summarize though like i think what we're basically saying is that now we will enter into a depression and a lot of countries or the world as a whole will have a lot of decisions to make in terms of how do you balance economics as well as the general global health uh, of the population. So I think as we wrap up, Leo, we usually just ask our guests for your recommendations. Yeah, so this can be anything entertainment books you're reading what something you're watching just yeah something different I'm, do you know what? i'm watching a show called lie to me on amazon prime i don't know if you've ever heard of that um it's really interesting huh never was it about so it's about basically about a guy like a doctor who 
can read people's um people's body language. So he's like a detective, isn't it? So he basically he basically works for the FBI, or whatever. He reads people's body language and and basically explains how people's body languages tell them are uh, basically communicate so much than we think. Like your body language gives you away so much than you actually even think it gives you away, and it's really in- interesting because when you look at how he figures people out, and you and you and then, and then like you look at someone else and then you ask them a question, they do the same thing. You're like, whoa, that's so weird. <laughs> that's one thing I felt. But um, yeah, to the books, I'll say. A good book to read is I'll probably I'm reading right now is Mastery by Robert Green. That's a really good book. Um, yeah. Or another one is um is the Dreams by is Dreams it's book on Dreams by Sigmund Freud because I've been having really weird dreams during during this lockdown. <laughs> so <laughs> not that kind of dreams, not that kind of dreams, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking. I wasn't even thinking that. Yeah, but having like different views on that. But yeah, well, that's also something else you mentioned in the previous episode. Which uh, yeah, cool. But definitely, uh, Leah, we'll, we'll love to have you back for a second episode for sure. You know, we'll have we'll have absolutely, back. absolutely. We we'll have to come back, man. It's, it's, it's and and as we end it, bro, do you have any like socials you want to share or anything? Nah. <laughs> I heard you got some cooking thing though. Oh yeah, my, oh yeah, my cooking thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, Leo's Kitchen fourteen on Instagram. Yeah, follow that one. Definitely. He makes some he makes some banging meals by the way, guys, and cocktails. So if you guys yeah. want some ideas yeah. on right. and cook- also as well, um shout out obviously in Instagram, go to Cocktails on Deck. It's a new company that I'm working with my friend on. Um it's basically gonna be doing cocktails, cocktails to people, like cocktail um kits to people, stuff like that. To anyone there you go. So you did Fantastic. have some socials. So you did have socials. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you know, you know what it is? Sometimes you're kind of panic, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. But, um, yeah, we're doing the cocktail kits and also, so I also can also do parties. If, if you've got a party or whatever you're doing, whatever, and you need some people to make cocktails and whatever, we're more than happy, more than happy to come and accommodate you. So, yeah, cocktails on deck on Instagram, yeah. whatever. Just make sure, follow us, DM. Right, right now, and there's right now we've got we've got um we've got a prize. So if you can enter the prize, if you enter into the competition as soon as possible, we're giving away a free rum. If you don't want one, free rum. If you win, the, if you win, random random winner. We don't know who the winner is. I don't choose. No one chooses. Just a random generator. Everyone's got a fair chance of winning. So how long yeah. have they got till? Because you better hope this is uploaded before the ending of this prize draw. Um, I think it's up until I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna say until. Probably July, in it. That's when we're kicking off. Oh so. yeah, we, we're good. We're good then. We're good. I think. Yeah. So obviously, at like, July, that's when we're giving out like, the next bottle. I feel like we ever missed the, the first bottle, the second one, third one. So the first, the second one, then third prize is gonna be us to any friends or whatever. Like um, we're gonna come to your house or party, or whatever, and make you guys cocktails, or whatever. Or Lovely. Kit. Can't wait for that. No worries, man. Well, and as always, our socials are what our socials. Our socials are. Do you know what? On yeah, Instagram, you, you say what our socials <laughs> again, and then you just smash it out straight after. So go on. <laughs> yeah i literally i always i always like forget for like a split second and then i'm like oh yeah okay so it's canvas dot of dot life underscore on instagram canvas of life one on twitter and, and canvas of life on facebook and our website canvas hyphen of hyphen life dot com and as always stay safe stay healthy and stay alert goodbye it's been a pleasure till next time <laughs> <laughs>